what is happening y'all cowboy here and welcome to my dream of the wise build for neo 2 corrupted susano so after almost 30 hours of testing and trying out all the new graces this is what we have settled on this build is a seven piece magatsui six piece susano set and it absolutely decimates content whether you're doing winds of ruin or takumaru the dlc high level scrolls it doesn't matter this build will shred everything now, before we go in depth into the build, let's talk about the alternatives and why we chose this. Now, the two other big sets that just came out are the Ame no Uzumi and Akala's Grace. Akala's Grace has Rock Solid, while Ame no Uzumi has Death Dancer. Both of these are very similar. The idea is you need to dodge and then attack with Ame, and you need to block and then attack with Akala. And these go up to nine stacks each. At nine stacks, Death Dancer is going to be a 70% damage increase. Akala is a 40% damage increase. However, both these builds, you will lose stacks if you're hit. So if you're hit even once, if you get popped once with the Ami set, you drop from 70% down to 40%. So if you're at seven stacks, you're down at 40% already. Um, whereas the Magatsui set, you might be looking at it and be like, well, hang on, that's only 20% though. Why would we run that? The thing a lot of people forget is that corrupted weapons, when sentience fills up, that purple bar you see right there, when that hits max, these weapons gain a 30% damage buff by default. When you add that 20% in right there, it's a static 50% as long as our weapon is awakened. And when you add in Sentience Charge and pick this up in other places, such as on your soul cores or on your scroll or on your accessories, you can get it up to where your Sentience will build up in roughly 15 to 20 seconds and then you're just sitting at a static 50% damage boost, 50% anima charge increase, on top of the already absurd damage that comes from versatility. And needless to say, this is not only incredibly powerful, but it's very consistent as well, which is what I think I like about it the most. Uh, if you're the type of player that plays very well, almost flawlessly, Ame no Uzumi is a great set. Personally, I don't like the fact that if I get popped once, I'm going to start losing my stacks. And because of that, I found this to be a lot more consistent in practice. Uh, so moving on from there, let's talk about it. So as I said, you want seven pieces Magatsui, six pieces Susano. What piece is where does not matter. Um, you know, basically you're going to take whatever you can get with Wise. Uh, you do want corruption weapons. Obviously, they don't have to be Magatsui weapons. They could be Susano with corruption. Uh, and in particular, the new fists, the Suchigumo Clawed Fists, are great to have here uh, because they have one innate stat. Whereas a lot of uh, a lot of corrupted weapons usually have two innates, Bloodstained Cleavers being pretty good because melee versus zero key is a solid stat to begin with. Uh, but a lot of corrupted weapons, the secondary innate stat is kind of like gooky. It's it's kind of. It's kind of gooky. It's kind of dooky. Uh, so because of that, Suchigumo Claw Fists are great. Uh, I also want to point out that when it comes to fists in particular, uh, we have claw weapons and then we have actual fists and they have different icon. The, the fist weapons themselves deal more key damage. Uh, whereas think of it like the claw is just 100 across the board. The fists are like 25% less damage, but 25% more key damage. However, one thing that I think is worth mentioning is... With the claws in particular, you get access to Tiger Claws, which is the hidden skill from Hayabusa. And this is a phenomenal skill. You can chain this off of Archer's Impact in an infinite loot to build up uh, to build up your unbroken stacks if you want. So even though I like fists, Tiger Claws is just really freaking good. Uh, and and kind of made me join Claw Camp as opposed to Fist Camp. Uh, but anyway, for your weapons, I would suggest transforming the bonus to courage if you're running fists we'll learn more about this why later but essentially we're running ultimate courage uh, so this is a new stat what happens is this is typically strength this is a skill weapon now they're both courage weapons it takes up a slot to do but hey that's pretty neat and it allows me to min max even more effectively besides that attack bonus stat melee attack key consumption melee key damage life drain uh, if you can get star life drain active skill i would take that over life drain melee attack uh, i haven't had luck so far but just something to keep in mind Ranged weapons, uh, Stalwart is great to have, otherwise damage bonus agility on them. Moving down onto the helm, Anima Charge, in my opinion, is going to be the most important stat for the helm. Uh, this is going to ramp up our Anima Charge rate drastically, which is going to be great because we can spam Gozuki more. Uh, moving on from there, ideally you want medium weight gear. I have some really crappy gloves. 
Uh, but medium weight gear, you can have better rolls on, so keep that in mind. Stuff like active skill key damage, active skill damage, and ideally you want to try and get double stars on any piece you're going with. My gloves are really crappy, but I didn't want to hold off any longer on this video for y'all. Uh, so life, active skill key damage here, active skill key damage, active skill damage here. I would prefer to have attack winded and anima charge, but I could only get anima charge, so I took that. Uh, and then we have melee key damage and dash key consumption here. As for what pieces in particular to use, it's really going to be up to you. Um, just, you know, look through the gear and look for innate pieces and then just kind of go from there and take advantage of the uh, lucky drop to kind of get more stuff that you want to drop. But, you know, melee damage versus yokai and key recovery speed, those aren't, those aren't terrible things to have. Uh, quick attack damage ain't bad. But anyway, moving down. Um, as for our accessories, this is pretty much a perfect accessory. It's Magatsui, it has sentience charge, it has melee damage versus corrupted. Uh, corrupted accumulation, you can temper that on, so don't worry about getting that on the roll. Uh, as for my Yasukani Susano, unfortunately that isn't quite as nice. Uh, anima charge, luck, and then I tempered on corrupted accumulation. Uh, keep in mind to get graces, you can just plug Yasukani's into your Stone of Penance, level them up, pop it out, see what you get. Alternatively, you can save scum Otakumaru, the Eye of the Beholder mission on Wise to get a specific Grace Yasukani. It's a reward from that quest, so you'd have to save before you beat him. Back up your save before you kill him, and then kill him, check the loot, reload, kill him, check the loot, reload. Uh, but beyond that, save scumming is pretty much dead. There are a, a very, very couple instances in which save scumming will still work. For the most part, it's gone. So just something to throw it out there. Uh, moving on to our scroll, the two things on this scroll that I would consider the most important, I love this scroll by the way, it's all sexy scroll, uh, but Sentience Charge and Ultimate Courage. Those would be the two most important things with this setup. Ultimate Courage is going to reduce the key cost for attacking by it's some absurd value. It's like 20 to 25%, which is phenomenal with claws. Uh, and then Sentience Charge, obviously, this increases how fast our weapon is reaching that unlock state where it's really starting to do damage. Uh, beyond that, ultimate constitution, just this is nice quality of life. It just helps keep my health full. And then increase attack winded is uh, basically like a Yamnaba buff, but smaller. It's a 20% increase anytime I win something. So it's just nice. It's there. It's flat damage that's getting added into my kit. I like it. As for our Omyo, they added water and lightning familiars. So use either water, fire, or lightning, whatever you need for the right situation. Extraction and Archeokai. Anima is great and extraction is great. Uh, beyond that, we have some Nijitsu stuff for speedruns. Moving on down, Yume Hami, coming on back. Melee key damage still reigns supreme. If you really don't like using Phantom, uh, you could use Mikami, the very, very first spirit. It has 10% melee attack key reduction, which works well with fists, but otherwise, I would consider Yume Hami to be the superior choice because of melee key damage. Moving on down to our soul cores, the most important thing here is Sentience Charge. I'm not a giant fan of Thunderstorm Oni Bees and Kappas, but they have Sentience Charge, so we're using them. Gozuki, on the other hand, I killed maybe 35 different Gozuki to get a Sentience Charge Gozuki, but it's worth it because Gozuki is a core part of this build. Um, Gozuki basically does a buttload of key damage, and with our absurd anima rate that we have, keep in mind that we are able to, we have a 50% anima charge when our awakens, uh, weapon is awakened, this basically allows us to go straight into a combo and then dump Gozuki, and then a combo and then dump Gozuki. And this is going to allow us to blow through enemies and knock them down. And what's so important about that is a lot of enemies have this thing, Curse of the Wise. And as you can see, it does a bunch of stuff we don't want to deal with. You know, they take less key damage, they consume less key, they hit harder, all that stuff. We can cancel that out as soon as we burst counter grapple or final blow. So being able to dunk all over them via Gozuki and our super rapid attacks is very, very nice. Uh, moving on from there, the other thing I want to point out is in the Shifling Tree, Hasten Awakening here, 20% free sentience, and over here, 20% longer awaken state. Don't run this build without these two things maxed out. Uh, moving on into our stats, 200 constitution, 200 courage. Uh, Courage is our main scaling stat on both of our weapons since we use transform bonus. Constitution, just because stuff hits really hard on this difficulty. Uh, beyond that, magic is 21 and dex is 14, so we have exactly enough capacity for what I'm running. 
Uh, skill and strength are both at their base of 10. Those are like soft caps. And stamina is going to be high enough that I have B agility. Beyond that, any other stat points I have are going to get dumped into heart. Um, the last thing I really want to touch on is I cannot stress enough how important sentience charge is going to be. Uh, get it on all three of your cores. That's going to be roughly 70% right there. If you can, get it on accessories. It can roll up to 60%. I don't have it here, unfortunately, but I have it there. Uh, your scroll can roll almost 100%. And then, of course, it is also 100% free from the set. So to really make this build work at a bare minimum, I would say you need roughly 200% sentience. If you can get more than that, the more the better. Right now, I am at 312%. And I think that's incredibly comfortable. Um, if I could get it on my my other accessory to bump it up to like 350, that'd be delicious. Uh, but I got by using it at roughly like 200, 250 before. But obviously, the higher that number is, the faster your weapon gets awakened. And the faster it gets awakened, the faster you're getting that extra 20% damage, well, extra 50% damage and extra 50% anima charge. Uh, beyond that, let's talk about clans now typically i don't talk about clans but being that we are now at like the highest tier of content almost uh, i wanted to touch on clans very quickly and there are two clans in particular that i would recommend with this build the first being meta now what meta does is when it's maxed out you have a hundred percent uh, reduced defense on grapple it's basically going to double your grapple damage and because grapple removes curse that obviously becomes a very very powerful tool uh, beyond that, the other big suggestion I would have is Honda, and not for the active skill damage, but for the damage taken halved. Because we already have access to Ultimate Constitution, which gives us the rapid health drain above 70%, with Honda, that's basically always active, because almost nothing in this game is going to put you below the 70% threshold if you have Honda active and you have your clan rank maxed out. So... Basically, if you're still getting used to claws, if you're feeling uncomfortable, I would suggest Honda. It'll make your survivability skyrocket. If you're comfortable enough to where you're not worried about getting booped and you'd rather have them big fat grapples, go for Meta because your Meta grapples will be like 25 to 30,000 damage. Uh, moving on from there, just to touch on some claw stuff very briefly. Uh, Azuna drop is great, but it's currently bugged. It doesn't get any of the grapple bonuses. It doesn't get the meta bonus. It doesn't remove curse. Basically, it's not programmed to actually count as a grapple. Um, I'm saying this is a bug because in the original Neo, it did count as a grapple. So I'm assuming that'll get fixed. Use regular grapple until it does. After it gets fixed, swap over to Azuna drop. Uh, as for the mystic art, I would suggest gong over unbowed. We don't really need Unbowed with Ultimate Courage, and Gong is going to allow us to just keep our skills going even longer. Uh, beyond that, I mean, I could do an entire video talking about Fists. They are a really, really fun weapon. Uh, and honestly, it took me a solid, like, five to ten hours just playing with them and messing around to really get a feel for playing them and chaining the abilities together. Honestly, the best advice I can give here is to just take the Fists into the dojo and practice they are a weapon that needs more practice than probably any other weapon in the game in my opinion uh, they have the potential to be incredibly strong but only after you really get them down and learn them so either way let's jump in we're going to do winds of ruin uh, and then after that we will knock out calamity's pulse i mean that's basically the pinnacle of content in this game we have level sync on right now just to to keep things good so let's show you what we can do uh, keep in mind, our damage is really going to ramp up after our sentience achieves. Which, when you saw our damage suddenly ramp right there, that was sentience. Oh, God. Still trying to get the timing down for that thing, but... So right now, Sentience is down. Put this on. Oh, 
Very unfortunate Gozuki that whiffed there. around with stuff that I'm not as good at. So that's, uh, you can chain Archer Impact to the Claw over and over again. That's what you saw us doing right there. Nope. Oh, I was a second too late on that. So just to show that, we go archers, dash. We go stop it. Archer, st stop hitting. Next, we got Calamity's Pulse, 481, once again, level sync on. This one's going to be real easy, because we're going to have Sentience right at the start here. Made of grapples. Couldn't get it off in time. That is unfortunate. But we're awakened, so honestly, it's probably not gonna matter. He got shredded. So the, the Limitless Punch is a lot better for big yokai, like all the stuff we fought right here. Uh, just to talk about that combo briefly, because it is... I wonder if that's an Otaku Maru's rule. Um, to really maximize out that combo, what you're doing in slow motion here is you're stomping, 
changing stances and then doing limitless. So limitless is going to burn through all your key. Ideally, you want that at like nine stacks of versatility. Um, but it, I mean, it's a long wind up. Hits really, really hard, as you saw right there. And you get it right, you go like that. So the punch went out while Stomp's active. Hits super, super hard. So the last thing we're going to tackle here is a scroll with uh, Suchigomi and Lightning Gods of Yomi. This is the final boss and the first boss in the DLC. So if you haven't had a chance to play it, obvious spoilers. But, uh, you know, just in case of Takumaru getting punched to death wasn't impressive enough. Let's uh, fight some other stuff. Uh, and I will be streaming with this build as time goes on. This is this is pretty much my build for Wise. much time as I put into this, we're only going to make this thing even more powerful as time goes on. Just shredded. Absolutely shredded. So either way, that is going to wrap things up for this one. Um, you know, like I said, just just a super, super powerful build. Very consistent in the damage that it's capable of doing. You're, you're able to just shred through stuff. Um, and you know, if you're struggling to put this together, hey, you can use the uh, Soul Core box thing until you get the parts you need. But either way, that's going to wrap up this one for now. Thanks for tuning on in hopefully try the build on out let me know what y'all think i think this is this is probably the most fun i have had with neo to be honest the fists are a phenomenal weapon and i feel that this build really aims to capitalize on them by allowing you to do as much damage as possible with them through the courage bonus and whatnot so thanks for tuning in and i'll see y'all next time